Hi and welcome back. So I think we're all pretty much aware of Brian Johnson and his Blueprint project, but you may not be aware of his Rejuvenation Olympics, something that Brian Johnson and his doctor, Oliver Zolman, came up with. It's basically a place where people can go and share the methods they're using to reverse their biological age and also the statistics backing up how successful they are. Johnson is at number seven on the relative change Rejuvenation Olympics leaderboard. He's 46 at the moment, but he says he has a heart health of a 37 year old. Now in the fascinating world of anti-aging, tech millionaire Brian Johnson and retired systems engineer Dave Pascoe have embarked on markedly different journeys, each with its unique regime and its financial outlay. Johnson, known for his boundary pushing, biohacking efforts, spares no expense in his quest to reverse the aging process, reportedly having invested a staggering $2 million a year so far. Johnson's approach is comprehensive, involving everything from plasma transfusions, remarkably using his teenage son's blood, to a vegan diet of mushed up food, all aimed at reclaiming the vitality and the health markers of a much, much younger man. Johnson's regimen is not just about physical interventions, it extends into a meticulously structured lifestyle that dictates his sleep, his exercise, and also his diet. His commitment to biohacking sees him experimenting with a vast array of supplements, and in some cases, the count has been well over 100 per day. This alongside medical treatments that most would consider futuristic. This intense lifestyle is part of what Johnson calls his Blueprint Project, a personal initiative that only seeks to turn back his biological clock, but also to position himself as a pioneer in the anti-aging space. Contrastingly, David Pascoe's approach, while still committed, operates on a significantly leaner budget of just $30,000 a year. At 61, Pascoe's regimen has led him to report an epigenetic age of 37.95, which beats Johnson on the Olympic leaderboard suggesting a level of biological youthfulness that defies his chronological age. Dave Pascoe's strategy involves a daily cocktail of 120 supplements, peptide injections, regular plasma donations, and semi-annual hyperbaric oxygen treatments. But Pascoe's approach is marked by a balance that indicates enjoying the simple pleasures of life, like sauna visits, Netflix, and the diet that emphasizes variety and moderation. During an interview, David Pascoe said, it's funny when people learn that I'm nearly 62, whether they've just met me or they've known me for years. They're always very surprised and they don't believe me at first. They immediately assume it's just good luck or genes. I'd explain that it did not happen by chance. That is from very intentional lifestyle choices. Then maybe one out of 10 people will even ask what those choices involve. However, as soon as it occurs to them, that they might have to give up their Diet Coke, for example, they say, oh, I'm not doing that. And then that's the end of the conversation. He went on to say, my body is like a prized racehorse or cherished high-end performance vehicle. I will only ever get this one. So just like any valued possession, I will invest heavily in its appearance, performance, fuel, care, and maintenance. I only wish I knew and applied everything I now know decades ago. Pasco's method of cost management is as pragmatic as his approach to aging. He opts to personally oversee most of his health regime, seeking professional advice only for the occasional sanity check. His hands-on approach extends to his plasma donations, which not only serve a therapeutic purpose, but also offer a financial offset against the more costly treatments. The stark contrast in expenditure between Johnson and Pascoe highlights a broader debate within the anti-aging community about the accessibility and the scalability of such interventions. Johnson's lavish spending underscores a no-holds-barred approach to biohacking, leveraging his substantial resources to explore the cutting edge of what's possible. Meanwhile, Pascoe's more measured expenditure reflects a disciplined yet equally effective regime, proving that significant anti-aging results can be achieved without a multi-million dollar investment. Both men share a common goal, to extend health span and challenge the traditional boundaries of aging. Yet, their different strategies underscore a fundamental question about the future of anti-aging. Will the most effective interventions remain the preserve of the wealthy? 
or can they be democratized to benefit a broader swath of society? As Johnson and Pasco continue their personal quests, they not only contribute to the evolving science of longevity, but also to the ongoing dialogue about its ethical, financial, and its social implications. In essence, the journeys of Johnson and Pasco serve as a good case study into the personalization of anti-aging strategies. They reflect a spectrum of possibilities, from high-cost, high-tech interventions to more accessible, lifestyle-based approaches. As the science of anti-aging advances, the experience of these two pioneers will offer valuable insights into the potential future of longevity, highlighting the interplay between innovation and investment and the universal desire of everybody to live longer, happier years, i.e. a longer health span. So if you do follow the channel, you may remember some time ago that I did a video on what's the cost of my longevity supplement stack. It came out somewhere around $5.75 a day. That's around $2,000 a year. My last biological age test had me at 49.67 years old. That's around 49 and eight months. And that was when my chronological age was 59 and five months. So three months short of being 10 years younger. Please let me know if you'd be so kind, how much your current stack costs. And if you've done a biological age test recently, how much younger are you?